Hello all artists, I hope you're doing well. This is just a quick intro to tell you what this video is about. So basically I'm just going to go over some of the steps from digital drawing and then talk about some of the final steps that I take on a more completed version of a digital painting. So this is a sketch of a man that I saw in Peru when I traveled there on my trip to South America. Now I first heard this man's music from a distance as I was exploring the Sacred Valley, which was really quite incredible, mesmerizing. The music coming from his flute and I don't know the name of his other instrument seemed to just echo and travel across the, the landscape. It was really quite incredible. So this was the first sketch that I did. And basically what I did was I took a hard round brush and lightly sketched in the figure and then dropped the opacity down to about 30%. Opened up a new layer, hard round brush again, and then I just drew over some of the details. And I was actually quite happy with this sketch, but for some reason I wanted to try another one for, based on one of the photos that I took of this gentleman. But this was quite an enjoyable process with this early sketch, you know, it was a nice pose. There wasn't a sun or moon behind him, but I just put it there for aesthetic purposes, kind of like how you see a lot of the classic illustrators do. So this was the second sketch. This is the one that I actually went with for the final digital painting. I'm not sure exactly why I went with this one at the time, but I just kind of liked the position he was in and that you could see him blowing into the his instrument, his flute, I believe that is a flute. And you could see more of his face, it's more of a three quarter view. I just kind of preferred that at the time, but I was happy with both sketches. So I just decided to go with this one and take it into a finished digital painting. Now, when I took it into a finished digital painting, I coloured in first, like the major colour areas in a flat colour. So I chose like a mid-tone for his skin, a whitish grey for his hat, and then for each section on his clothing, which was very bright and vibrant and colourful, I just chose the local colour. And this is the finished result, or close to being finished, because I do actually paint some more final details in with this painting. Now, I just made up this background. This is just me playing around, being you know creative. I took away the, the valley because I thought it'd probably be a bit too distracting. And I just wanted the, wanted the focus to be entirely on the Peruvian man himself. And I was having fun with these painterly brush strokes, as you can probably see. So what I have done is I've taken my old finished digital painting and I'm just reworking it slightly. So some of the things that I'm doing here, what I noticed on the older file was it was a bit, it wasn't quite as vibrant as it should be. So I pumped up the saturation a little bit and I took the dodge tool and I went over some of the highlight areas just very, very lightly on about 5%. So that that top part of his flute layer which catches a bit of the, the sun, little bits of his eyes and the slight highlights on top of his flute, top of his fingers, and just little areas here and there just to make him pop a little bit more and create a bit more contrast in the painting. Now what I'm doing here is, is painting out some of that gray that I painted in, because I feel like his silhouette is very strong I just wanted to emphasize that a little bit more and I felt like these dark gray brush strokes were a bit too strong for the image around his head especially. He's got very, you know, almost black hair. So that against a slightly light, lighter background would create a stronger silhouette and help him pop just that little bit more. So I'm just still using the same hard round brush that I usually use. And I'm just, this is where I'm brushing in 
with the dodge tool, I believe. In a few areas. I also darkened some of the areas ever so slightly that weren't darkened before. And I actually, when I was reworking this, I didn't have access to the original photo that I took of him. So I was just going off my memory and what I understand so far about how light works and color works on the figure and form and values. Now, when I saw this man, I actually, I stood with him. I was with a tour group at the time and I stood with him and listened to his music and it was really quite incredible, quite mesmerizing. I stood there, I kind of lost track of time. I don't think it was too long, but the tour group were marching up the, the hill somewhere and I had to run after them, but it was really an amazing experience, which I'll never forget. Probably embedded in my memory even more thanks to me doing this painting of him. That's one of the great things about creating art, especially based on places that you've been and people that you've seen, is that the memory becomes that much stronger. You remember so much more about the moment than you would looking at a standard photograph. It's kind of similar to plein air painting, except you do it in your own time relive the memory. So I painted this when I got back home in England. Now here, this is where I'm just slightly painting over some of the shadow areas, trying to get a bit more form on some of these shapes that I noticed before, could have done with a little bit extra work. In my photo that I took of him, his face appeared very dark. It was mostly out, you know, hiding away from the light, mostly in shadow, just a few bits of light hitting his lip and nostril. And I just decide here to paint in a few extra little brush strokes on his hat, it's a very colourful hat. Definitely keep you warm, I remember in Peru, keep your ears warm, these kind of hats. Brought a few back for my family. Now at this point, I'm just looking around the painting and trying to find areas, what, what needs to be worked on. Here I can see that I've actually, part of the background has gone over the top of his instrument, which was completely unintended. So I've started to paint over that and make it a bit more crisp and clean. And this is kind of the process when you're finishing a digital painting you've spent quite a few hours on. You want to go away and come back and have fresh eyes so you can look at it again and then you can see, you know, what can I improve here? What, what's, what could, what's the extra 5 to 10% that I can put in to really make this painting, you know, that much more, that little bit higher quality than it was before. Here I'm just cleaning up my layers, shutting everything down and um, making sure that I save each step as I go along. There was just too many unnecessary versions there, so I just deleted them. It's always good to create some structure in your layers and keep everything organized in groups and stuff like that. It's quite easy to do. It's also quite easy to get carried away and just have 20 to 30 layers opened up and you have no idea what's going on or where anything is. So when you can, just merge them down, put them in a group, merge those layers down. You know, when you think about it with a real painting in real life, you don't have layers, you just have, you have the canvas and you've got to paint over what you've already painted before. So the less groups and layers that you can keep, the more closer to the real painting experience you will be. Now, I've just zoomed out there. Zooming in and out in Photoshop is really useful when you're working on digital art. It's very similar to standing back and getting close to your canvas 
helps you to see the bigger picture a lot easier. Check the silhouette, how everything, all of the elements of the painting are working together. So what I did next, I decided that I wanted to expand the width of the canvas because it just seemed a little bit too narrow as you know, if, if this was to be an art print, you'd have a lot of white border on a typical sheet of paper or even a canvas. So I thought, okay, why not? Let's just widen this canvas, which is one of the great things you can do when you're painting digitally, of course. I just took the crop tool and selected the axis, which is for the width and just pulled to the right hand side and the left hand side. Just a little bit more just to create this extra area that I can paint in and just it helps the figure be a bit more central in the image. Here I'm just taking the hard round brush again and just going over some of the background grey tones and just repainting them in. You know, it's quite a relaxing experience painting the background I find. It's also good as, you know, a bit of a warm up if, you, if you're just coming into a new painting or even a, an old painting and you haven't quite done the background. Just playing around with shapes is quite a nice warm up to do when you're doing digital art, I find. Now what I do after I paint the shapes with the hard round brush is I sometimes I will smudge some of these and blend them together, some of these shapes to create that painterly effect that I'm really looking for that is very similar to oil painting, which I love to do as well. No need to rush on this process, you take your time, go with what feels right and natural in the moment. And hopefully you're, you're doing this digital painting without distractions. You've got your phone turned off, put on airplane mode. I know how easy it is to get distracted. And you just relax yourself into the process and enjoy. I mean, detailing is I find personally the most fun part of the painting. I do really enjoy doing the initial initial sketches because it's very loose, but something about just applying the finishing touches and making those final decisions on on a painting I find really enjoyable. And sometimes you can add additional story elements into the painting that you might not have thought of before. Usually that happens when you take a step back, take a break from the painting, maybe return to it the next day or a few days later and you see something or you see an opportunity in the space for something new to be put in. In this case, I don't do that. I'm just painting in gray tones and brush strokes into the background. But in many instances before where I've been doing digital painting, I have it created new elements and integrated them into the illustration or the painting. Now I think for this entire process I only use one brush for the background and then one additional brush for the Peruvian man which was a kind of texture, gritty sort of material that I used for his his coat, his clothing. And I'll just drag parts of it here and there. And at this stage, it really is, you know, it's just touching up little areas, looking around, scanning the painting. You know, what is it? Is there anything else you can improve ever so slightly. You don't want to be putting details everywhere, of course. The main focus is his face and the instruments. And this is where I'm just making the final few 
and brush strokes blending in these background grays and, and whites together not everywhere and just some select areas creating some contrast between hard and soft quite similar to how you'd paint clouds you get those hard lines but also some very blurred and soft lines too just creating that variation so that's basically it for this video i didn't go into you know the whole painting process of the figure but i just explained you know some of the final tips that i'd give to touching up the finished painting if you'd like me to create another video where i go into much more detail about painting the figure in full just let me know in the comments and thank you very much for watching please do like share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you all next time Thank you.